Michelle from Lab Muffin Beauty Science here, and today we're going to be talking about more skincare myths. If you follow me at Lab Muffin Beauty Science on Instagram, you know that I regularly bust beauty myths. Earlier I did a video on five of the biggest skincare myths, and today I'm going to be talking about five more. If you believe in some of these myths, don't feel too bad. I definitely believed in all of these at some point. The important thing is, once we find out that it's a myth, we stop repeating it and we stop perpetuating it. The problem with myths is that they lead us to act in ways that we think are beneficial, but actually aren't. They might do nothing, or they might even be actively harmful. If you like watching this sort of video, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can also click the notification bell so you don't miss any videos, and click the like under this video as well. The first myth is that you should only use chemical exfoliants at night. This myth is about chemical exfoliants, and in particular it's about the alpha hydroxy acid exfoliant glycolic acid. There were some studies that found that using glycolic acid could make your skin photosensitive. In other words, it was more sensitive to the sun, it was easier to get sunburnt. I think this myth came because a lot of people saw the results of this study and assumed that it was because the glycolic acid in the skin, when sunlight was shining on it, it caused it to react in a way that it normally wouldn't. Sort of like how citrus oils can do this. But the structure of glycolic acid means that it can't interact with the sun very strongly. And if you look at what actually happened in the study, it's pretty clear that this is a myth. In the study, 10% glycolic acid and 2% salicylic acid was applied to volunteer skin for three and a half weeks. Then the next day, after the three and a half weeks, they tested the skin with UV and they found that the area with 10% glycolic acid was more sensitive. So in the study, there wasn't actually fresh glycolic acid on the skin when it was tested with UV. That means that it's more likely that the glycolic acid caused the skin to change in a way that made it more susceptible to UV damage. So for example, the cells are flatter and so light gets through more easily, or there might be less pigment. An interesting part of the study is that the area that was treated with salicylic acid didn't actually get more photosensitive. And in studies where salicylic acid was freshly applied on the skin and then treated with UV, they actually found that salicylic acid was protective. You can see that from the structure of salicylic acid, it can actually absorb UV. Salicylic acid also has anti-inflammatory properties which could cool down sunburn. What you should be doing instead, just use chemical exfoliants wherever they fit into your routine. If you're using glycolic acid or any other alpha hydroxy acids, make sure you wear sunscreen as well. You should be wearing sunscreen anyway because it's really good for your skin. If you want to find out more about how to exfoliate, then I have a free exfoliation guide that you can download. I've got the link in the description. Myth number two, the difference between physical and chemical sunscreens is that physical sunscreens scatter and reflect UV light, while chemical sunscreens absorb UV light and convert it to heat. I see this myth around a lot from dermatologists and peer-reviewed articles and other sources that you would normally expect to be quite reliable. In reality, the physical sunscreens, which usually refers to zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, they only scatter and reflect about 5% of the sun's UV. The other 95% is absorbed and converted to heat, just like with chemical sunscreens. This might seem like a nitpicky technical detail that we shouldn't really worry too much about, but the problem is it does lead to people picking physical sunscreens for reasons that aren't actually true. For example, some people think that this is the reason why chemical sunscreens feel hotter on their face, or that the heat produced by chemical sunscreens can make melasma worse, when in reality there's only really a 5% difference. So because of this myth, some people turn to physical sunscreens and then they run into the biggest drawbacks of these, which is the fact that they're really thick, they tend to be quite uncomfortable, and they often give a white cast, which is where when you apply it on darker skin, not even that dark, so I see this on my skin. And then to get around these problems, people apply less sunscreen, which is definitely bad for you. You can find out more about how to pick and use sunscreens in my ebook, The Lab Muffin Guide to Basic Skincare. There is a free sample chapter which includes lots of information on sunscreens. I've also done lots and lots of videos about sunscreens, I've linked all of this again in the description. The next myth is that if a product contains comedogenic ingredients, it will break you out. I've done a video before on the whole concept of comedogenicity, but in short, the tests for these don't reflect how products are used in real life. Firstly, the tests were done on rabbit ears, which are not human faces, and there was one very important false positive very early on, which was petrolatum, or petroleum jelly. This clogged rabbit ears, but later on they found out that on human skin, it doesn't clog 
pores at all. Newer tests use human skin, but they usually use back skin, and they cover the ingredient with a patch, which is, again, not how we would use this product on our skin. The third big issue is that they usually use 100% of an ingredient. In a product, we have dilution, Ingredients will interact with each other and your skin differently if they've been diluted. For example, if you have pure butter versus butter in a cake, it's a very different experience. So these comatogenicity ratings might point you in the right direction if you're trying to work out which product is breaking you out, especially if it's a product that only has one ingredient or if it has a really comatogenic ingredient as one of the top ingredients. Even then, different people will react differently to the same product. Instead, what you should do is keep track of products that have broken you out and see if you can work out which ingredients are common between them. Definitely don't throw out products that have worked for you just based on these ratings. You should also add one product at a time to your routine so that you can easily work out which product is causing you to break out. The next myth is that medical grade skincare is better for your skin. So firstly, to clarify, medical grade refers to products or brands that are only sold in dermatology clinics or in aesthetics clinics. They're also sometimes called clinical products or professional grade products. This is very different from prescription medications like tretinoin cream or over-the-counter medications like benzoyl peroxide or sunscreen. There are lots of myths about why medical grade skincare products are supposedly better. For example, there's a myth that they're regulated differently from regular cosmetics, which is not true. So-called medical grade products like cleansers and moisturizers are not regulated differently from normal brands that you would get in a supermarket. It is just a marketing term with no legal meaning. There's also the myth that they automatically contain high quality ingredients, that they're rigorously tested, that they have clinical studies to back them up. Again, this might be true for some brands, but not necessarily just from the term medical grade. It really depends on what that specific brand wants to do with their development process. Even though the term implies that there's all this rigorous testing, a brand can simply just slap the term medical grade on their product and sell it only through particular clinics. And without any of this testing, that would be perfectly fine. There's also the fact that lots of drugstore products are rigorously tested, especially with the brands that are more dermatological. There's also this myth that medical grade products are allowed to penetrate more deeply or contain higher concentrations of actives than so-called over-the-counter or regular drugstore products. And again, it's not true, they aren't regulated differently. Instead, what you should do is use skincare products that work for your skin and your budget and your preferences. If a brand has data to back up their products, that's fantastic, look at that. But don't just look at the word medical grade and expect that that will work better. The final myth is that oily skin doesn't require moisturizer. I've talked about this myth before in my video on dry and dehydrated skin. Oily skin can produce lots of oil, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's good at holding onto water. So for example, my skin. The oil that sits on top of your skin, the sebum, isn't actually that good at holding onto water or preventing transepidermal water loss. Moisturizers are designed to help your skin compensate for lack of oil or lack of water. And there are three main types of ingredients in these. They are occlusives, which sit on top of your skin and trap water in. There are emollients which help to soften your skin and there are humectants which hold onto water and keep it on your skin. Not all of these ingredients are oils. Often occlusives and emollients are oils, but humectants are not oily. So if your skin is oily, you shouldn't just avoid moisturizers. Instead, what you should do is check if your skin is dehydration prone, then pick a moisturizer that addresses that problem. If you want a ton of detail about picking moisturizers, you can check out my video on dry and dehydrated skin. I also have a whole chapter in my ebook that's all about picking moisturizers. So did you believe any of these five myths? I definitely did. Are there other myths that you keep seeing pop up time and time again? If so, leave them in the comments and I will bust them. If you like myth busting, you might want to follow me at Lab Muffin Beauty Science on Instagram where I bust myths all the time. You can of course subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out my blog as well. See you next time.